Jen Benepe, and this is The Real Deal. We're here today on Wall Street, the locus of the financial crisis for New York City and the nation. Well, some are calling this the worst financial shock since the Great Depression. Financial firms once considered the bedrock of the financial sector have toppled. In a normal recession, this might be a good time for people to gather in and go and buy some cheap real estate. But now credit is tight, so will the government bailout help those people get mortgages? That's the objective. No one's quite clear on whether it will. You're calling for a top-to-bottom independent review of the building's department, but Commissioner Patricia Lancaster has already asked the Department of Investigations to audit. She's also re-inspecting the crane sites and conducting other internal audits. Is that enough, in your view? Well, I'm glad that, that she's certainly pushing the envelope. Okay, so we're in a bit of shock since Elliot Spitzer's resignation, and we now have a new governor starting very soon. And we were wondering what to expect from him for all the big mega projects in New York City. He's very bright, decent guy, and I'm sure he's going to evaluate all of these projects because clearly the government doesn't have enough money to do all of them. Okay, so One Medicine, you and Wilbur Gonzalez as a team, sold that in less than a year or just about a year. What was the sales process like and why did you sell so fast? It was the highest velocity of sales that we've experienced since our inception. First up, we have Elizabeth Lorenzo, who's the director of sales for the Plaza. So tell us first, the first thing about the Plaza that a lot of people don't know, that there's a hotel side and a residence side, and? Well, it seems that a lot of people don't know there is a new Plaza Hotel. We're here tonight at the Association of Real Estate Women's 30th Annual Function. It's a great celebration. We have some of the best and the brightest people here. And what do they have to tell us here today? They're going to tell us how they deal with the credit crunch. They're going to tell us how it's affecting their developments. And they're going to tell us even more things that we don't expect. So this is your first rental design project mm -hmm. in New York. And how did that come about? Why, why now? Well, you know, I have spent stupidly 30 years of my life uh, with my concept of democratic design. We're here with Jonathan Krieger from Robert K. Futterman Associates and we're going to talk about the wonderful new retail that's springing up on the Bowery. How are you doing today? Doing great. How are you? Good. So you leased the space to none other than John Barbados. That's correct. Tell us a little bit about his type of fashion and why he decided to come here to the Bowery. Well, I think uh, what John saw is what a lot of people are seeing and that's the redevelopment of the Bowery. But what are some of the problems still existing in this area? For one, noise. The number one noise area in the entire city. Not just for its traffic, but also for all the bars and restaurants here that residents just can't stand. We're here outside the Searle store with Faith Hope Consolo, chairman of the retail division of Prudential Douglas Elliman. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, how are you? Tell us a little bit about the positioning of the store. Well, here we are at 59th and Madison, right across the street from Barney's, Calvin Klein. Now, we're here to celebrate tonight, but in some ways the economy maybe is not something that we're celebrating, but do you feel that there has been some optimism coming from Wall Street? I think Wall Street is, uh, is uh, trying to find itself right now. The Lev Group has begun building a massive five-tower, 1.1 million square foot mixed-use complex in Flushing, Queens. The city Council the approved by a 45 to 3 count Mayor Bloomberg's plans to rezone and transform Jamaica. The joint venture between Tribeca Associates, Square Mile Capital Management, and Lattice Partners signed a 99-year ground lease with Trinity Real Estate for three. Okay, you've put together some very impressive financial deals for commercial real estate. Some of them with 110 percent mezzanine financing or less, and. Uh, is that type of financing a way of the past? Well, I think the people who need the funds at the level that you're talking about uh, are going to find it uh, virtually impossible uh, to achieve those levels of, of debt. Real Deal reporter Jen Benepe sat down with the CEO of Property Shark, Bill Staniford, to talk about what this new dilemma will mean for property values and residential sales. Bill, welcome back to The Real Deal. It's a pleasure to have you. Thanks, Jen. Why are these numbers significant for New York City? Absolutely. There are certain areas in the country that are a lot more devastated. And I can just take Las Vegas, for example, or Miami. Let's just get serious for a second. Who is buying those very expensive apartments? And who can pay $2,000 a square foot? And who needs all those amenities? I mean, it sounds almost crazy. I live, for instance, in a building. I'm your best example. And what's your prognosis for ARU now that it's allowing men in? <laughs> 
I think having all people of good quality in an organization is going to make it grow and be a good thing. But you know what? I think we gave it up a lot quicker than the boys of the old club community did. So will the new IKEA jumpstart Red Hook's residential and retail development, as supporters have said? Or will it be a character killer? Love it or hate it, we'll soon have the answers to those questions. I'm Jen Benepe for The Real Deal, and we'll see you next week.